Hey, and welcome back to a quick and easy guide to the Abyssal Dungeon Phantom Palace. This is part two, Hildebrandt Palace. This boss you probably remember from PvE. Her mechanics are pretty much the same, but her attacks are a little more aggressive. So starting out, I found it was a lot easier to dodge the majority of her attacks if you just attack her from the side. Okay, yeah, okay. Fat-ass berserker hitbox. Attacking from the side will completely negate the possibilities of getting attacked by her main ability. It's a cone that shoots out front and back of her, and the safe zones are to the side. Among other things she'll do is this radioactive AoE, where there's three safe sides long, but you can stay close and dodge it all. Another big mechanic she'll do is a rotating AoE pizza. There's a one-fourth safe zone. You want to stay in the safe zone, it rotates clockwise. She'll do a full rotation of that, and then you get back to tank and spank. No. Which is the most... Oh, the second one might be. The third one's definitely the hardest. Mechanically. When the boss jumps in the middle of the map, that's the start of her wave mechanic. You probably remember this from PvE. One wave will spawn on one side of the map. It'll clear the whole room. you got to jump in a mirror to escape the wave. The only twist to the Abyssal Dungeon is they color the mirrors. So the blue mirror goes to the blue mirror, yellow to yellow, red to red. The one thing you don't want to do is jump in the purple mirror. The purple mirror will result in insta-death for that character. Another thing I would suggest not trying to do is using the corner mirrors that match. Like in this case, the white mirrors are matching. Because there's a delay when the character uses the mirror, you probably will die using them. Alright, waves. So right here we'll show the mirror delay I was talking about. We all run to the red mirror and the last guy doesn't make it even though he's right behind us because it takes a few seconds for the mirror to actually teleport you. Later in the fight she'll start spawning regular waves that don't kill you, they just knock you up and apply a debuff to you. These waves are easily dodged or you can roll right through them, it doesn't really matter, just keep the damage bumping. And that's pretty much it for the first fight. You avoid the white mechanic, you keep your damage up, and try and kill it before she goes berserk. All right. This boss is very straightforward. There's three main mechanics you have to worry about. We'll take them one by one. Hey. The first big mechanic is she's going to tilt the battlefield, and meters are going to start rolling side to side. You just want to dodge his meters. You can roll through them. It will still do damage, but you'll get past it and get an easy dodge. Another big mechanic she'll do during the tilt phase is she'll highlight a random party member red. This means the party member is going to get hit with a meteor, but if he goes close enough to the boss, she'll get hit with it. It'll end the meteor phase and apply a stacker, which allows you to get some free hits on her. So after hitting her with the meteor, you'll enter the last phase of the fight, which will introduce a new mechanic, which will be used in the next fight. These blue AoE spells will get you caught in a bubble, and the only way out fast is to get hit by your teammates. The damage that the teammates apply doesn't matter, but the amount of attacks they do matters. So you kind of want to make sure you have a fast hitting attack just to save some of your teammates. All right, the final fight in this dungeon is probably the most mechanically inclined. There's going to be two staggers checks that start at 34 health bars and 26 health bars. If these are failed, it'll result in a wipe. There's also two wipe mechanics that you need four people for. So unfortunately, if one of your party members dies before these checks, it's a wipe anyway. In the beginning of the fight, she'll give you these AoE bubbles that you want to bring far away from the fight and roll out of because they will CC you. You kind of just tank and spank, get her down to 34 bars of HP, and make sure you have your stagger abilities saved Alrighty. up for this check. Again, if you're playing with party members who have low stagger abilities, have them run some whirlwind grenades. Those blue abilities that put you in a bubble will make a comeback here, but it's even more detrimental to avoid them because if you have only three people on a stagger check, it's exponentially harder to make it. The second stagger check happens at 26 HP. Save your stagger abilities, save your grenades. It's just another stagger check. So the big white mechanic in this dungeon is one party member will randomly get an X over his head and the other three will be shooting lasers. The three with lasers want to point their laser at the teammate with the X over his head. Once the check clears, there's going to be a giant AoE that you got to run out of. This white mechanic gets very frustrating because the lasers do have range and they're very hard to aim. 
So to help aim, I recommend the party members with the lasers to attack the guy with the guy on the X. That guarantees them facing the right direction. These tips will help avoid the shameful yet rare rage quitting. Anyway, uh, back to the white mechanic. So the second white mechanic's a little different. Uh, there's only two people with lasers, one with an X on their head and one with a tail. The X has to stand in the area that's attached to the one player and the two lasers have to hit the X still. It gets a little tricky because the guy with the tail has to stay completely still and the two lasers still have to hit. Other than that, that's the last white mechanic of this boss fight. Oh my Good God, luck, beautiful. and may the RNG gods always be in your favor.